Welcome to this episode of On Location, where I take you behind the scenes on a recent live production that I've done. Now in this series, I have taken you to Copenhagen, Amsterdam, Dublin, but in this episode, we're here in Sweden, in my studio, and we're gonna cover the recent panel discussion that we had to wrap up NAB. I got loads of questions, both live and after the fact, about how we made that happen, so let's dig in. Planning. So this one all started with a plan, and a good place to do that is Google Docs. I like to use it to collect all the useful links and details needed for the guests, and that will hopefully end in a successful show. I do find in general that giving everyone a clear starting place is really nice for notes, for links, for discussion points, and for whatever else pops up during a show. Vmix. The production itself was all powered by Vmix. This includes the inputs, the callers, recording, and the streaming of the show. First up here, I had my A10 Mini Extreme connected as the first source, and I was using that to cut between my local cameras here in the studio. I mostly use my main shot, but then I did show my wide shot during the opening of the show. Then all my guests were next to that, and this was using Vmix Call. More on that a little bit later. I do have a few more inputs here. The first was a panel view, which was created using H2R layouts, of course. And I know, I know that is my own tool, but it worked really well for creating this layout. I could build the rough idea of what I wanted here with all five guests, and then I download that as a vMix layer layout. I have another variation of that here too, which I called Panel Plus, and this was a desktop capture from my local PC here, so I could show things like websites and imagery. Then I had a H2R graphics output window and a video looping some pre-show music. I also threw together this quick PNG here with names since I didn't want to do this in vMix and it was a really fast way to get those in there. vMix call. As mentioned before, we did use vMix call to connect all the guests and talk between ourselves and it did work really well. Each guest got a join link and they could join the show from their browser. Jonas though was the only one who also had vMix on his end and he was able to join through vMix. This meant that I got 1080p quality from him as opposed to the 720p quality from all the other guests. And this is one of the limitations here for vMix call. If you join through the browser, it does max out at 720p, whereas if you join via vMix, it gets you 1080p quality. That's probably one of the downsides of this setup here, since I really wanted 1080p from everyone, but I couldn't expect everyone to run vMix on their end. Now with vMix call, I can receive audio and video from the guests, and then I can decide what to send back to them in terms of audio video. I opted for sending them a program feedback just for simplicity. However, I could have sent back something else with timers on top, or maybe a couple of different angles. Audio. Another reason to stick with vMix call when you're running the whole production through vMix is that it handles mix menaces really well. This means that the caller won't hear their own audio coming back to them and I don't have to do anything to manage that. I sent everyone back a B bus mix, which included all the audio from all the guests and myself, but it didn't include the pre-show music. This way during the pre-show we could chat while the music played and the audience couldn't hear us, but they could hear the music. I also used this Ulean plugin into vMix to monitor the audio in pre-show checks. This was particularly useful so I could get all the guest levels matching each other roughly. Control. I ended up using this X Keys 24 to run the show and it worked out really well. When connected to vMix, you can program each button to have a function. At the very last minute, I also added a row of mute buttons for myself and all the panelists, just in case I needed them. I only used them a few times, but it was really nice to have them there. And aside from a few missed cuts, I was able to run the show pretty nicely without looking down too often. By the end of the show, I was used to where the buttons were and I could just have my hand off to the side, pressing those buttons and be pretty confident about what I was doing. I also used the full screen output from vMix into my teleprompter and that way I knew what was on program at all times. Graphics. Now, of course, I ended up using H2R graphics for this show. It made sense for the few graphics that we actually needed. And mostly this was just the opening timer and the social comments. I ended up running out of time to add the other graphics that I wanted to add, which were individual lower thirds for each panelist and the credits at the end of the show. Of course, I could have added these on the fly during the show, but I decided just to keep my focus on the production instead of worrying about adding more things. That's one of those choices that you make whenever you're hosting and running the production. You kind of have to decide what to focus on and I chose to focus on the content instead of adding the credits for the end. Some lessons learned. I did end up learning a few things along the way for this show and ways that I can improve future shows. So let's dig into those. The first one was that I didn't have any backups for the layouts. I had my five up panel view, but if one of the panelists were to cancel in the last minute, I was kind of screwed. I didn't have a four or a three version. That's something I will add for the future, but this time, luckily, all my panelists showed up and it worked out nicely. It would have been nice to have a few two ups as well, so I could have had some back and forth between people, maybe myself and one of the panelists who was talking, but 
it just wasn't something I had time for, and I didn't really want to patch those during the show as well. And one more thing I started to work on in the pre-show, but we ended up running out of time, was a lost signal holder for each panelist. This is something I could have shown whenever a panelist disappeared off VMIX call. We ended up not really needing that, which was nice, but uh, it's nice to have just in case one of the pictures goes dark. A big thanks to Alex, Ali, Jonas, and David for joining the panel, chatting with me. It was a lot of fun, and it seemed like plenty of people enjoyed it, so it was good. And a big thanks to you for watching. If you want to see more content on VMIX, I am super interested in making those videos. I've only really scratched the surface of what is possible in this video, so I'd be interested to hear if you want to see it. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.